Roblox VR. The game I've been gushing about for two of the past four videos on this channel has finally released its open beta, and after some community polling and feedback, it seems that the reaction to it from the Quest user side is not that favorable. However, on the Roblox side, everyone's feeling pretty good about it, and as I've discussed in the past, having access to millions of potential VR titles for free is something that's really good for the growth of the beta quest. However, it seems that most quest users aren't really realizing that because all they see is clunky titles, semi-okay flat screen crossplay, and low frame rates. So, as both a Roblox and a Quest 2 user, I find myself fit enough to give you a comprehensible guide that should theoretically fix most of your problems and complaints about Roblox VR. So without further ado, enjoy the video. So firstly, we're going to address the easy part and get it out of the way. For those of you wondering how to get Roblox on your MetaQuest headset, all you need to do is go to the store app and search Roblox in the search bar. It should show up and then allow for you to download it for free. Next up comes account creation. This can be done by going onto your MetaQuest browser and creating an account there, using a laptop or PC to create an account through a web browser, or using the Roblox app on a phone or tablet. After it's created, you can click the settings icon and go to Quick Login, where you'll receive a code that you can input into the Roblox application on your headset, which should take you into your account's profile page. But do keep in mind that even though Roblox says this is an open beta, one issue that people have been having is having the game not even show up on the store. Some people theorize that the reason why this is happening though is because Roblox has a limited available number of people who can download the game. I honestly don't know why they would do that because it seems pretty bad for business, but this is just an issue that I wanted to make aware just in case you aren't seeing the Roblox application on your headset. But for the sake of this video, let's say that you were able to get it up and running and you're now in your profile page. Great! Now that the installation guide is out of the way, let's address some of the concerns that were previously mentioned in the intro. For starters, we have the biggest thing that's deterring Quest players from downloading Roblox, and that's the issue of jaggedy gameplay and low frame rates. Fixing the FPS is actually pretty simple. See, when you boot up a fresh Roblox account, the default settings set your in-game graphics to what's called automatic. This means that depending on the current performance of the headset, you can see graphical increases and decreases while in-game in order to have the most smooth experience. And yes, this does sound good on paper, although in the real world, it does not translate well mainly due to the fact that in order for your graphical settings to change, which they will do frequently, your headset will first have to detect a frame drop, which the player will see in their game, as well as ruining their immersion, and second, have to expend extra resources on your headset so it could run those graphical settings, therefore also lowering your frames. The easier and more simple way to fix this is by going into your settings and switching off automatic graphics. Then, it's as simple as determining if you want the smoothest experience at the expense of render distance or experiencing what you did before but with high-end graphics. This choice is represented through the slider displayed here, and I personally recommend keeping it at 1, 2, or 3, with 1 having the lowest render distance but also having the smoothest gameplay. And now that your headset graphics have been fixed, you'll probably want to go try some games. One concern I saw from a lot of Quest players was the lack of VR titles. See, what you need to realize right now is that Roblox VR is still in a very infant stage, even more so on the MetaQuest platform. So, although there aren't a lot of VR titles compared to the Quest Store, you can still find a lot of amazing games by searching VR at the search bar on the top. That should give you at least a place to start, and if you thought that was good, we haven't even scratched the flat screen cross platform. See, what's super cool about Roblox on the Quest 2 is that it has a lot of the same button mappings as an Xbox or PlayStation controller, meaning that for a lot of devs, they can allow some form of VR support as long as they have controller support. So by using your controller as pointers and different buttons as your keybinds, you can successfully play popular flat screen games in virtual reality mode. However, this does come with what some might call a limitation, because since the game itself perceives the quest as a flat screen device, you will spawn in a third person mode. But the simple click of your joystick, specifically the right one, should change your perspective to first person, which will make movement and immersion a lot better. 
And now that you know how to play both virtual reality and non-virtual reality supported games, it's time for some of my recommendations. These are the games that when I played them had the most fun compared to some of the other virtual reality titles, and I would definitely recommend a lot of the beginners playing these games to get a feel for how Roblox plays out on the Quest 2. So, if you're looking to try out a good VR first person shooter, one VR FPS that runs pretty smoothly and has decent movement is called Opposer VR. It's one of the most popular VR FPSs on Roblox right now, and it supports cross-platform between VR and flat screen systems. The game itself plays out in about 20 minute rounds that either are free for all or team deathmatch modes. The game has a variety of different weapons, including a lot of pistols, rifles, shotguns, and including melee weapons and riot shields. However, what can really turn the tides in one of the modes is usually using power-ups. Right now, the game supports three available power-ups, one being a speed boost, another a jetpack, and the third one being body armor. So yeah, overall, a great VR FPS, and I definitely recommend you check it out. Next up, we have Virtual Reality Horror, and oh my gosh, there is literally no virtual reality supported horror games, and honestly, it's kind of sad, because a lot of VR horror games would probably work insanely well in VR, if not making the ones that are already here VR supported. But not all hope is lost if you're looking for a good scare, because many flat screen games translate well over to virtual reality, and this includes in the VR genre. Personally, there are two games that I have had a lot of fun with, and even though they're flat screen supported with VR compatibility, they're still holding up pretty well. The first one is called 3008, which is basically a replica of SCP-3008 The Infinite Ikea, where you could take furniture and stack it up on each other and try and survive the staff. The second one I'd recommend is called The Night Shift Experience. It's a little more simpler than that previously mentioned 3008, but it still has a pretty good story and decent jump scares. I actually played this in my recent livestream, and if you want to join me too when I play Roblox VR with viewers, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. But getting back to more recommendations, have you ever wanted to actually experience motion sickness in VR? Well then look no further than Theme Park Tycoon 2. This is basically, as the name suggests, a theme park building game where you get your own theme park that you're able to build out and make custom roller coasters. The building mechanic in the game isn't really the best, and after completing the tutorial, I'd personally recommend just going over to other players' parks and riding their custom roller coasters, so you still at least get the same experience, and you get a pretty cool POV as you're doing it. Finally, the last game on this list is called Clashers VR. It's basically a wave survival game where you use either swords or bows to defend against waves of enemies with a party of up to four people. Once again, it's a pretty simple premise, and honestly, it kind of reminds me of Golden Trophy from Rec Room, but it's still a pretty fun pickup and a great game to play from time to time. So those are all of the VR games that you can play right now that I would personally recommend you doing. However, there's a lot of VR games that when the Quest 2 beta released ended up breaking a lot of the mechanics inside of the game and making it really laggy to run through the Quest 2. However, I still feel like I should include them in this video because if you're watching this later down the line, perhaps a couple months or so, you'll probably be able to play these games because they would have fixed all their bugs. First off is Project SCP, which basically plays like another game called SCP Containment Breach. However, instead of actually playing as just the D-Class, you'll actually be able to play as everything, and every role is filled by a player instead of an NPC, making for a lot of awesome situations. The second one is called Nerf Strike, which has pretty good gunplay, however, your hands and guns are insanely big, making for some slightly out of place gunplay. And the third and final game is called Edgeworks. I don't actually know if this game is bugged or glitchy, I'm sure it might be, but we don't really know for sure, and that's because it costs 400 Robux in order to play this game. Now I'm sure you're wondering why you'd pay almost $5 for a Roblox VR game, but this game is actually a Boneworks recreation, but inside of Roblox. So if you're willing to spend the money, I definitely recommend at least checking this out and letting me know if it's good in the comments. And yeah, that's it. That's the full guide to getting started on Roblox VR. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if this ended up helping you out. Also, if you want to see more from this channel, then click the video on screen right now talking about how Roblox might have just killed Rec Room with its open beta release. But yeah, with that said, my name is Trentic and I will be signing out. Peace.